Welcome back to This Is A Commander Channel, where this is a Commander Channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander Tough Rules and Cool Interactions, Episode 75. Today's episode is going to take a look at Sagas in Magic, which isn't a card type that I have covered yet on this channel, yet they do have a lot of pretty confusing aspects to them. What specifically inspired me to make this episode today is the recently spoiled Tom Bombadil that we will be getting from the upcoming Lord of the Rings set. And I'm not going to read his whole card's text, as that's not the focus for today's episode, just the inspiration. Uh, but based on his text, it is safe to say that we will be getting a lot more sagas soon, and some people may even try to build a saga deck with Tom as their commander, as he's the first true five-color saga commander that we've gotten. So, on to the main focus of today's episode. For more information about sagas, please check out section 715 in the comprehensive rules, as we will be going into the sub-rules of that section in this video here in just a bit. So here's the scenario. Your opponent controls a Vornclex monstrous raider, and he has two replacement effects. But for now, we're only going to focus on his second replacement effect, as it is your opponent who is the controller of Vornclex. His replacement effect says that if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead, rounded down. So if they control him, Vorinclex, and then you play your Birth of the Imperium, what would happen? The individual effects of the Birth of Imperium uh, are not all too important, just knowing which chapter number is happening. So when you play your Birth of the Imperium, would Chapter 1 happen? In this case, would you create a 2-2 creature token? In order for Sagas to trigger, they must get their lore counter. And Sagas can get those lore counters in three different ways. They can get them as they enter the battlefield, they can get them as your pre-combat main phase begins, and you can also proliferate them if you have at least one counter on them to choose. So, as your birth of the Imperium enters the battlefield, the Vornclex is going to see that one lore counter, and it will replace it to be 0.5, rounded down, which is zero. So your chapter one ability would it actually trigger if it's getting zero lore counters? The answer here is that sadly it will not. The enemy Vorinclex will stop a Planeswalker from gaining loyalty counters that's being put on them, but it will not stop the loyalty ability from being activated. But in the case of a Saga, the Vorinclex will actually stop the Saga from getting its counter and from triggering their abilities, because again, it's the actual act of them gaining a lore counter and the game checking for that, checking that the number of counters against the chapter number, that is what causes their triggered abilities to happen. So now let's complicate things a bit. Let's say that you are the one that controls a Vornclex Monstrous Raider, which is when his first replacement effect will come into play. And it says, if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. So you are again playing your Birth of the Imperium, which means that it will be entering the battlefield with two lore counters on it. What will happen? Because it entered with two and never had a single counter placed on it, will you skip chapter one, the creation of a 2-2 creature token, and go straight to making your opponents sacrifice a creature in chapter two? Or maybe you will get to do both chapter one and chapter two's abilities. So the answer in this case is probably going to surprise a bunch of you, but you will actually get to do both of them. The reason for this is in the comprehensive rules under section 715.2b, which says Roman numeral then effect, means when one or more lore counters are put onto this saga, if the number of lore counters on it was less than n and becomes at least n, do the effect. So it doesn't care how many, all it cares about is how many were there 
and now how many are there? It was zero before, and now it is two. Then it was greater in the case of Roman numeral one and the case of Roman numeral two. So both go onto the stack at the same time. So here comes your first bonus question. If this were to happen, what determines the order of those triggered abilities on the stack? Will chapter one have to resolve first? Or will it enter the stack first and therefore resolve after chapter two's triggered ability? Or is there some other way in which these resolving triggers will be determined? Please let me know down in the comments for that bonus question, your first bonus question. Okay, and now to even further complicate this scenario, you are again playing with a Vornklex out, but this time you decide to play a Braids' Frightful Return, which is another saga, but this one is different from the Birth of the Imperium. Can anyone see what the difference is yet? It's not because Braids' Frightful Return is a monocolored saga, that, that has no impact. Okay, the answer is that Braids' Frightful Return is a saga that has Read Ahead. And there is some reminder text on Read Ahead, and it says, Choose a chapter and start with that many lore counters. Add one after your draw step. Skipped chapters don't trigger. Aha! That last part, I said, makes it pretty clear as to what will happen now. But I know that many players will miss that tiny little detail in the italicized text that is buried by all of the other plentiful text on the card. So we can also look in the comprehensive rules under section 702.155a for an even more specific answer as to what would happen in these situations. And there's a lot in that ruling, so I'm going to focus on one specific part that says, Chapter abilities of this saga can't trigger the turn it entered the battlefield unless it has exactly the number of lore counters on it specified in the chapter symbol of that ability. So if a saga with read ahead enters and you choose the number one, yet it enters the battlefield with two lore counters on it, it has two, yet the number picked was one, so no luck there. So that's the difference between the read ahead and the non-read ahead sagas in cases of like a Vornklex doubling effect being out. And now this leads into your second bonus question. What if you played your Braids' Frightful Return while not controlling Vornklex, but then you do play the Vornklex, and on a later turn you go into your pre-combat main phase, what will happen? How many lore counters will the Braids' Frightful Return get, and what will happen to your Read Ahead saga when this happens? Anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you have found this video to be entertaining at least, and I hope that a few of you have even learned something about the crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta. And for the second week in a row, I am under the weather. Thankfully, I have taken a lot of drugs this time, so hopefully I don't sound as nasally as I did, but man, I am... I am out of breath. I am exhausted. And now I have to edit this video. It's 1.30 a.m. Why do I wait so late to edit and render these videos? Anyhow, whatever. I'm going to stop talking so I can get this done. Okay. Yeah, bye.